Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll be discussing those in-between times or transition periods and how you can always make sure that you look your best in those variable temperatures. <laughs> Most of us will have experienced some kind of a transitional season, something like an autumn or a spring. Now, these seasons are a favorite time of year for many people. Springtime sees the world warming up after a season of very cold temperatures in winter. And autumn brings rich golden colors and a bit of a respite from those hot temperatures of summer. Now, as wonderful as these seasons are, there's no denying that they can also make it a bit tricky to pull together an outfit that helps you feel stylish and still comfortable. Something that is flexible enough to adapt as temperatures change. Now you might be asking, what's the challenge of dressing in transitional seasons? Now the biggest challenge with transitional seasons is the unpredictable weather. And one of the great things about summer and winter is that the weather makes it a little bit easier to dress for. We naturally expect summer to be warm and winter to be cold. So summer dressing will usually consist of light, cool outfits such as our suggestions in this video. And for winter, it's usually a case of heavier outfits to keep you warm. This video will give you some winter outfit inspiration. So when the seasons are transitioning and it's neither summer or winter, it can be a challenge to figure out how to dress for the day. Now during a transitional season, most of us can experience temperatures ranging from 45 degrees to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That could also equate to seven to 21 degrees Celsius. Now that's a big difference in temperature. Sometimes rainfall might be expected in transitional seasons. Check out this video for some inspiration on some rain weather essentials. We can't run home and change three times a day. That's just impractical. But we still want outfits that are flexible enough to adapt to the different weather trends that we might be facing throughout the day. Now what kind of clothing is best for transitional seasons? Before we take a look at how to put outfits together, let's first take a moment to look at some individual items and what makes them great for transitional seasons. Now let's first start off with lightweight outerwear. Now transitional dressing is a great time to enjoy lightweight outerwear options. The iconic trench coat has been worn for decades as a great means of protection against the elements. And this is the perfect choice to wear over a suit in transitional periods. The double-breasted military inspiration of this coat makes it pair wonderfully with formal attire. Although the trench coat can also be worn with more casual ensembles just as well. A trench coat is perfect for transitional dressing as it's traditionally made with cotton gabardine. Now this is much lighter than the heavier woolen coats made for winter. Those are designed to protect you from much colder temperatures. It's also possible to find trench coat liners, something that's a removable layer that's going to provide extra warmth in the coat. And I think you'll find that that's incredibly useful in the middle of a temperature change. Take a look at our in-depth review of the Burberry trench coat here. A Harrington jacket is a great choice for more casual outfits. Rising to popularity in the 50s and 60s, the Harrington jacket is a popular and stylish choice. It was originally invented to be worn on the golf course as a casual outerwear piece. The design is clean and simple, making it easy to wear for most men. Features include angled pockets at the hips, a zipper that goes to the neck, and either elasticated cuffs or buttons close to the wrist. This helps keep the wind out. You may also see a tall collar that buttons at the neck, which is again helpful in keeping out the wind. And most models feature an elasticated waist too, but you can also find some models that have a straight hem at the bottom of the jacket. All of these features make the Harrington jacket a great choice to wear in transitional seasons. Barracuda is one of the oldest companies still producing Harrington jackets. The famous G9 model has been spotted on many classic stars like Elvis Presley, Steve McQueen, and James Dean. If you want to know more about this iconic jacket, check out our Is It Worth It video here. Transitional seasons are also a great time to enjoy leather jackets. Much like the Harrington jacket, leather jackets offer a more casual solution to transitional dressing. Typically, leather jackets are designed to protect you from the elements, and they have a rich history in being worn by motorcycle riders, such as the famous Trial Master model from Bellstaff. And some leather jackets, like the Trial Master, are treated to be water resistant. Leather isn't as light as a wax cotton, but isn't as heavy as a thick wool. Now this makes it an excellent contender for transitional wear as a medium weight jacket. If you choose something like the Trial Master, you get a timeless style with extra added practicality. After all, a jacket in this style is designed to be used. With a generous length to keep out the cold and the rain, a belted waist to ensure the jacket stays closed, and multiple pockets for your everyday essentials. It makes a leather jacket a great choice for transitional wear. Find out what we think of the Trial Master jacket in this video. Next, let's talk about half-lined or unlined jackets. Getting in popularity in recent years, the half-lined or unlined jacket has become a welcome addition to transitional wear. A half-lined jacket refers to a jacket that has lining sewn into the sleeves. 
on the sides of the inside of the chest, on the inside of the chest, and across the shoulders and inside upper back area of the jacket. Whereas an unlined jacket will only have lining sewn into the sleeves of the jacket. Now, although you may be able to find completely unlined suit jackets, it makes it very difficult to put the jackets on and to take them off when there is no lining on the inside. Therefore, the sleeve lining is more necessary to make the jacket more user-friendly. Wearing a jacket with very little internal lining makes for a much more comfortable and cooler wearing experience. And this is because the jacket won't be as heavy as the jacket that has extra fabric in the lining. And the jacket will breathe better, helping you to better regulate your temperature. It is still possible for an online jacket to have some structure in the chest and shoulders. But this is usually quite light, otherwise it would negate the point of having less weight inside the jacket. Plus a half or online jacket lends itself to a more relaxed approach when it comes to tailoring. This makes an unstructured jacket easier to combine with other elements within your wardrobe. Think of the stylish Neapolitan tailors who prefer an unstructured look. Next, let's talk about overshirts and shackets. An overshirt or a shacket is a more casual way to put together a transitional outfit, and it's a nice alternative to a more traditional sport coat. Now, the term shacket comes from the shortening of shirt jacket, which makes sense as the garment is a hybrid of a dress shirt and a jacket. Whatever you want to call this piece, the overall structure is similar to that of a shirt. It buttons all the way to the neck, usually a functioning button at the cuff, and it usually will have some kind of a pointed collar. And what makes it different from a dress shirt is the amount of functional pockets featured throughout. Now, we don't know of many dress shirts with pockets at the hip. Kyle, what about the Wyabetta shirt? Okay, thank you, Preston. And that it's made from harder wearing fabrics than that of a traditional dress shirt. These include heavy cottons, linens, flannels, and corduroys. Now, the style originates from practical workwear, but in recent years, it has been updated and refined into a sartorial garment. Now, it works as a great alternative to an odd jacket or a sport coat. And the benefit of an overshirt is that it looks better with casual wear than an odd jacket or sport coat would. Now, although we love them, a suit jacket does not go with everything. The overshirt is a great option for transitional dressing as it's a lightweight option, which is a nice alternative to an odd jacket. Now, it can also be worn open or closed depending on the temperature. Unlike a suit jacket or a sport coat, which may have more refined rules as to when it can and cannot be buttoned. And it's unique as that it acts as a top layer on warmer days but you can put on a heavier coat on top of the overshirt on a colder day. There aren't many garments out there that are quite as versatile as that. Next, let's talk about cotton and linen knitwear. Now, as we already know, transitional seasons may have some cold temperatures as well. And knitwear is a no-brainer when it comes to adding a layer of warmth to your outfit. But what do you do when you don't need the full warmth of that heavy lamb's wool or cashmere winter sweater? This is where knitwear spun from cotton or linen or a combination of both will add a great layer to your transitional outfits. Cotton and linen are natural fibers. Now both are known for their ability to breathe very well, as you can find out in our videos about them. And as we've already discussed earlier today, a garment's ability to breathe well will help you better regulate your own temperature, which is exactly what you're looking for when dressing for transitional seasons. Linen typically has a distinctive texture and looser weave when woven into sweaters. This makes it wonderful for indulging in scorpachata or savoring the seasonality of clothing. Find out more about it in this video. Knitwear crafted from cotton is able to replicate the look of your favorite woolly winter sweaters without the extra warmth. For example, the traditional cricket or tennis sweaters are an icon of knitwear. Transitional seasons are the perfect opportunity to wear the style of sweater. Next, we have merino wool knitwear. Now, merino wool is a popular choice for knitwear. In fact, many wear it year round, except for those very hot summer days. That's a wool that is very fine and soft, kind of like cashmere but it has a unique sheen to it, which makes it pair very well with tailoring. And it can also dress up casual wear very nicely too. And when woven into a garment, the wool is usually thinner than in a cashmere or lamb's wool alternative. Now this is especially useful when layering, as it doesn't add as much bulk to an outfit as other knitwear might do. For instance, the cotton cricket sweater can be a great choice for transitional knitwear, but it's going to be quite bulky under tailoring, such as a sport coat. Now this is where merino knitwear really shines through, as you can add it underneath a sport coat without the added extra bulk, without looking like Mr. Stay Puffed in a suit. Another desirable trait of merino is its natural elasticity. Now this means it will hold its shape very well, and most importantly for transitional dressing, it breathes well too. A pair of suede shoes or even a smart boot, like a chukka or a Chelsea boot, will be a great alternative to a transitional outfit. Contrary to popular belief, suede is actually a very resilient material to have in unpredictable weather. Unlike calf leather, suede is actually less likely to show salt stains or watermarks after being subjected to the elements. And it also tends to dry more evenly than calf leather. So 
suede is also more easily treated with weatherproofing protector sprays. Now, although it will make your suede shoes waterproof, it will make them more resilient than say a calf leather in the event of an odd rain shower. Now, if your shoes have a good year welt, they'll have a greater level of water resistance too. Now you can further the waterproofing qualities by looking for shoes with full rubber soles or rubber inserts to the soles as well. This will help with not only waterproofing qualities, but also grip. Mitch and match fabrics. Now this last one isn't one type of item, but rather a tip for transitional dressing. Spazzato is the term used to describe the breaking down of a suit to create a new look. Here you can combine pieces of heavier and lighter suits to better regulate your temperature. Let's take the famous country outfit James Bond wears and Goldfinger as an example. Here we can see a barleycorn tweed hacking jacket. These are then paired with a cavalry twill trouser and finished off with suede shoes. He's also wearing a tobacco brown knit tie. Now if you'd like some inspiration on knit ties, check out this video here. And take a look at the Ford Belvedere shop so you can own some ties like the one Bond is wearing. Not only is this a nice tone-on-tone -tone outfit that is great for either spring or autumn, it's also perfect for transitional dressing. The jacket is a mid to heavyweight tweed, whereas the trousers are mid to lightweight. This means that Bond's temperature will better be regulated as it's not a head-to-toe ensemble in the same cloth. If a pair of tweed trousers were worn with a tweed jacket, it would probably be too warm. And as we've previously explored, the suede shoes would be a great choice for any possible rainfall that might come. The scene is set in England after all. You can see how useful the spazzato technique is when it comes to transitional outfits. And depending on where you feel the warmth or the cold, you can adjust what you're wearing accordingly. And it's theoretically one of the cheaper options as you won't need to buy anything new to pull this off. It's all about combining pieces from your existing wardrobe. Now that we've looked at some clothing for transitional seasons, now let's look at how we can put them together in a nice layered outfit. Now first thing we'll take a look at is formal attire. Now in warmer weather, you could be wearing a lightweight suit or an online jacket and lightweight trousers. You can then add in a dress shirt and a knit tie and perhaps a merino cardigan or a knitted waistcoat or even a sweater vest. You can also add suede shoes or even loafers. Next up, we have formal attire and cooler weather. Now you can start off with a midweight jacket and lightweight trousers or vice versa. Next, you can add in a dress shirt, a grenadine or a shang tongue tie, suede shoes, perhaps a derby or even an Oxford. Maybe add in a lightweight scarf. And if it's possibly raining that day, don't forget your umbrella and perhaps a trench coat. Next, let's move into business casual attire. Now in warmer weather, you can always add in chinos and of course a dress shirt, maybe even a linen dress shirt if it's very hot, a merino cardigan or sweater, and a pair of loafers, or if you prefer, maybe even a pair of lace-up dress shoes. And now in cooler weather, you can also wear a mid to lightweight jacket, a pair of chinos, an OCBD shirt, merino or cotton knitwear sweater. And if it's very cool, perhaps a lightweight scarf, Oxfords, derbies, or even a pair of monk straps would look quite nice. And if it's raining, again, don't forget your umbrella or a trench coat. And finally, we move into casual attire. Now in warmer weather, you could always opt for a plain t-shirt or a polo shirt, an overshirt or a shacket, denim jeans, boat shoes, or even a pair of loafers. And in cooler weather, don't forget your overshirt or shacket, or even a Harrington or a leather jacket, maybe even a cotton wax jacket, a merino or a cotton knitwear, with a plain t-shirt or even a polo underneath, denim jeans, maybe a pair of Chelsea boots, and this time, what we can even add instead of a trench coat, how about a leather jacket? Today I'm wearing a light red and white pinstripe sport shirt that I got from Brooks Brothers a long time ago with a pair of blue stretch slim chinos, pretty comfortable so I can wear them all day. And finishing off the look with my Fort Belvedere socks and a pair of brown lace-up dress shoes. Check out the Fort Belvedere shop here for socks like these.